Hello everyone. Today my team members and I will be presenting to you the design of a control system to stabilize an inverted pendulum with a reaction wheel end effector. This presentation is part of our EE471 Design of Control Systems final project. This project is taking place at California State University Long Beach in the Electrical Engineering Undergraduate Program. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Jula. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Grayson. And I'm Hien. And we're excited to share our project with you today. But first, let's talk about the inverted pendulum problem. In this project, our team tackled the traditional control systems problem of trying to stabilize an inverted pendulum. Picture to the right is a standard problem that uses a cart to stabilize a pendulum. We decided to take a different approach. Our solution to the inverted pendulum problem is an inverted pendulum with a reaction wheel end effector. What this allows for is an electromechanically simpler design than the cart system. With the cart system, you have to have a track for the cart to run on, as well as a system to push the cart back and forth on. Usually this is a belt and pulley system, and that's much more complicated, and it takes up uh, more space than the reaction wheel based setup. We will be looking into stabilizing the system with uh, both PID and LQR approaches. Hi, my name is Hien and I will be presenting the state space equation for this project. Uh, the first one is very straightforward. It's uh, the theta over the t, which is uh, theta dot and uh, omega. And this is the pendulum angular velocity. Uh, we were able to uh, reference off some of the research paper that we found online. And this is our pendulum angular acceleration, uh, omega dot. And this is the uh, motor acceleration, v dot. Over here is the state space representation. Um, U of t is our input, which is also the input voltage for the motor. Over here is our state vector, uh, theta, omega, and v. Theta is our pendulum uh, angle. Omega is the pendulum uh, angular velocity, and v is the motor speed. And over here is our output, y of t equals to um, theta. So with the differential equations that we found uh, on a previous page, we were able to find the uh, state matrix A right here, um, our input matrix B, and this is our output matrix C, and our feed forward gain matrix is uh, zero. Now we're going to talk about the PID controller design. Right here we have the linear system equations A, B, C, and D. And here we have two matrices for C. The first one, norm the normal C variable, we have 1, 0, 0. The one in the front stands for the theta, for the theta system. For C2, we have 0, 0, 1. And that one stands for the motor velocity of the system. We then take the transfer function uh, separately of both systems with different C's and then take the PID tuner to find the PID gains. And here we have KP negative 1040, KI negative 4127, and KD negative 65. We then take the feedback um, of the system and plot the step response. And we get step response of theta with PID controller and step response of V response with PID controller. So here you can see it our PID tuning response and you can see the step response of theta with PID controller on the right showing that the system is stable and shows that our output is pretty good. For the implementation of the PID controller we noticed that uh, the system is unstable even though the PID controller is fully operational. Multiple attempts to tune the pillar for different values of KP, KI, and KD yield the same results. Further investigation shows that the velocity of the motor is the limiting factor for the implementation of the PID controller. We realized that there is a limit to how much our motor can spin to create acceleration. As such, the motor uh, that we were using can only produce a small amount of acceleration if only theta is taken into account. Using MATLAB, uh, we plotted the step response of the system for theta and motor velocity for comparison. So you can see on the left, 
uh, we clearly see that uh, the, for the selected parameters of KP, KI, and KD, the step response of theta system is stable, while the step response of V is unstable. As such, the speed of the motor quickly saturates at its maximum RPM, and the motor no longer produces acceleration or force for the system. Here is our LQR controller implemented in MATLAB. So on the left, we have our different um, parameters that go into our state space matrices. These parameters were experimentally measured. Um, they were also found through the data sheets on the components that we have, as well as uh, using the SOLIDWORKS mass um, measurement tools. On the right, we have our state space modeling and LQR controller. And at the bottom, we have our output, which gives our, uh, our, our linearized LQR controller. And then please note the values in our linearized controller differ from the ones that we used experimentally. And um, this is just due to um, us tuning the system to, to work a little bit better. Here's our Simulink block diagram. And here is the output of our Simulink block diagram. If you look at the pendulum angle graph, you can see that our percent overshoot, steady state error, and settling time are all within an acceptable range. Please note that this graph is over um, a time scale of 5 seconds. Now we are in the Arduino IDE. We'll only be focusing on the main control systems for this project and not the rest of the code. The rest of the code can be found at the link provided at the end of the presentation. Focusing on our main loop here, we can see that we have two controllers. We have our LQR controller, and then we also have our swing up controller. Our swing up controller works by counteracting the direction that the velocity is going in and accelerating in the opposite direction. This causes the pendulum to swing back and forth, getting the pendulum to a point where the pendulum can start to stabilize. Once it's reached a stabilization area, the uh, LQR controller takes over and performs stabilization. This LQR controller here is the output of our MATLAB code. If you look at our MATLAB code, you'll see target voltage equals LQR controller, and then um, our constants multiplied by each of these right here. Here you can see our inverted pendulum swinging up and then stabilizing. Now that it's stabilized, we introduce some disturbances to see how the system reacts. As you can see, our system is able to survive small disturbances, but not large ones. Our team learned a lot of useful lessons through this project. The first of which is that LQR control is a powerful tool to control real-world systems. So is PID, but we also learned that PID control is not always the simplest approach to solving a control systems problem. We also learned that while the model in MATLAB can help you figure out the initial values for your system, Experimental testing to figure out better values is another great way to get your system to be more robust. Finally, we learned that 3D printing is a great tool to perform rapid design and testing. Here are the supplies and equipment used for our project. Please take a second to pause the video to check them out. I'd like to give a special thanks to Anton over at the Simple FOC project. We asked him a few questions over email and he got back to us very quickly. Thank you, Anton. If you have any questions, please email graceingliski at gmail.com. Additional project information and project files can be found at the link provided here. Thank you for your time.